Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in 1992 Bogota, Colombia. Fabio is speaking with Don Luis, a drug lord. Fabio informs him that he is leaving the cartel, and will delegate all bookkeeping to another associate. Don Luis smiles and says he will miss him. Don Luis looks at Marco, his right-hand man, as Fabio walks away. But Fabio is not silly. He is aware that his boss will try to kill him. He gathers three loyal guards and rushes home, knowing they only have an hour to leave the country. When he arrives home, he tells his wife Alicia, that the time has come. He instructs her daughter Catalea, to go to the American embassy, and give them a memory card if anything goes wrong. It contains all of the details about Don Luis's illegal activities. He also gives her his brother's address. Fabio then gives Catalea a flower necklace. Marco and other cartel members arrive minutes later, and slaughter Fabio's men. Fabio and Alicia grab guns, and attempt to repel the men, but they are killed off-screen. Catalea sits at the table, stunned, listening to the gunfire. She swallows the microchip quickly. Marco and the men approach Catalea. Marco acts friendly, claiming to be a friend of her father, but Fabio stole something from Don Luis, the memory card. She leans in close, and stabs him from beneath the table. She squeaks her way through a window and onto a ledge. While Marco's cartel goons pursue her, she flees. She climbs out of a manhole and heads to the US Embassy, where she is greeted by an agent who inquires about her father. She claims he is no longer alive. When the man asks if her father has anything, Catalea quickly forces herself to vomit, and hands him the memory card. The agent looks at her in disbelief, and asks if she is aware of what she has. Catalea says, my passport. They get her out of the country and legal papers, in exchange for the memory card. She is being escorted to Miami by an American CIA agent. She requests to use the restroom, and flees through the window. She buys a bus ticket to Chicago, as instructed by her father. She goes to a seedy area, and asks for Emilio. Emilio is Fabio's brother and her uncle. He is overcome with emotions when he sees her, and hugs her. Emilio takes her to a private prep school the next day, and bribes the principal to accept her in the middle of the school year. Catalea is furious as they leave, because she believes she will learn nothing at school. She wants to learn how to be an assassin. Emilio pulls out a revolver and shoots at a driver, causing the car to crash. He tells her that hired killers are plentiful, but they don't live long. She needs to go to school if she wants to do this and be smart. Fifteen years later, two cops are talking about their wives in their car, when they are smashed into by a drunk driver. A woman emerges, babbling incoherently. They capture her quickly, and we can see a flower necklace. It's Catalea, now a grown-up. They take her to the police station. She gets arrested and thrown into a cell for the night. That night, US Marshals arrive with a prisoner, and lead him to the cell. Catalea awakens. In fact, she got herself arrested on purpose, because she plans to kill the new prisoner. She dresses in a skin-tight black suit, and picks the lock. She takes a spoon from a cup of coffee in her cell. She swivels the cameras away, grabs some water from the cooler, and walks to the electrical room. She rigs the cup and spoon to create a spark, and enters the air ducts. After a few seconds, enough water leaks from the cup to short out the power. Catalea passes through a now-dead fan, just before the power is turned back on. She walks into the men's cell. When the cop guarding the prisoner notices he has no coffee, he leaves the room and is knocked out by Catalea. She drags his body in front of the camera, causing the door to reopen. She wakes up the prisoner, tells him to take his shirt off, and shoots him several times. When the marshals hear the gunshots, they rush to the cell and find the waking guard holding the gun. The marshals continue to search the entire building, and Catalea escapes to the roof. She returns through the air ducts, finds her cell, locks the door, and changes back into her clothes. By the time the marshals arrive, she is pretending to sleep. After being fingerprinted, Catalea is released the next day. She walks out of jail and grabs her hand. She used a latex skin, that mimics another person's fingerprints. Catalea returns home, and takes a shower. She goes to Danny, a painter, who is also her boyfriend. Danny knows nothing about her personal life, and only refers to her as Jennifer. Danny and Catalea make love, and she leaves the next morning. When FBI Special Agent Ross arrives at the jail, he realizes the victim is the latest, in a string of 22 murders they have been investigating for the past four years. The killer is known as the Tag Killer, because it leaves markings on the victim's chest. It appears to be a Catalea flower. Richard, a CIA agent, travels to New Orleans to a heavily guarded villa. It is the residence of Don Luis. Richard shows him the hit from the jail cells, but Luis denies any involvement. 
Richard tells him that the CIA was very nice to him, in exchange for information, he was given witness protection and allowed to continue running his shady business. Luis instructs Marco to handle the situation after Richard has left. He believes Catalea is responsible for the murders. He didn't kill Catalea the first time, so he has to do it right now. Meanwhile, Catalea visits Emilio. He promised his brother that he would protect her. He never intended for her to go down this path. He is constantly diverting jobs away from her to protect her. Catalea, defiant, claims she chose this path on her own, and will not back down until Luis is dead. Emilio sighs and hands her the next assignment. A hedge fund manager set up a Ponzi scheme, stole billions of dollars, and fled the country. So he has to die. Agent Ross is at the FBI office, reviewing security footage. Some of his agents believe the killer is Catalea, as seen on the tape, but he cannot believe a woman would commit such a heinous crime. Catalea arrives at her workplace, where she finds two large dogs, and gives them steaks. Inside, she finds Emilio's friend, Pepe. He is in charge of her weapons and vehicles. Catalea opens a safe and pulls out her forged passport. In the meantime, the hedge manager is living in a villa surrounded by gorgeous women. He informs his security that he needs more men tonight. Catalea swims through the aquarium, ignoring the sharks, and pushes open a glass door to enter the mansion. She pulls out a pistol and a silencer. The hedge fund manager wakes up, and finds the word thief written on his chest. As he walks around his mansion, he notices that all his guards have died. He grabs two guns and walks into the pool area after noticing a flower. Catalea sits in a chair, and he attempts to shoot her, but both of his guns are empty. He is shot in the legs by Catalea. He then falls into the open pool after Catalea shoots him in the chest. As the blood flows, his sharks devour him in seconds. Catalea returns to the United States and goes to Danny's apartment. Meanwhile, Ross is studying the tag killer calling card. When the mailman provides a crucial clue, it is the Catalea flower, which grows only in Colombia. Ross attempts to connect it to open cases in Colombia, but is denied access due to CIA jurisdiction. Ross calls Richard, and requests permission, but Richard avoids the subject. He calls Luis, and instructs him to handle the situation, before Agent Ross finds out the truth. Luis assigns Marco to find Catalea. In the meantime, the protagonist is having dinner with Danny. They talk for a while and then go to sleep. The next day, Danny quickly takes a photo of Catalea sleeping. Catalea panics, and says that she has to leave. She has a meeting with Emilio. He is furious after reading the newspaper, because now the enemies know the Catalea flower is related to her. Emilio claims it's not just about her, it's about the family she's left behind. She is putting them in jeopardy. When his son died, Emilio killed many people, but nothing changed. Emilio gives her a photo of her parents as a reminder of what can be lost. Catalea sits, sobbing. She joins Emilio and her grandmother at church. She appears to be ready to abandon her quest for vengeance. Danny is at a coffee shop, telling a friend about his girlfriend, Jennifer, and how he is falling for her, despite knowing nothing about her. The pal sees the photo, and is taken aback by how attractive she is. Danny leaves for a moment, so his friend takes the phone and calls his sister-in-law, who works at a police station. He requests that she check on Jennifer, to ensure her legitimacy, so Danny is not harmed. Ross is at his computer when he receives a notification with Catalea's photo. The photo matches the security footage from the jail. Now Ross is looking for a woman named Catalea. Catalea returns home and calls Danny, attempting to express her feelings for him. When Danny mentions the photo, she freaks out and asks who else saw it. As Catalea inspects the perimeter of her apartment, he mentions his friend. At that moment, SWAT is there to arrest her. She turns on the shower to escape her apartment, and climbs into a duct. She dashes through several apartments before entering one. She finds a harness and a sniper rifle in the man's bathroom, where she had previously planted them. As Ross and his agents search the door to her apartment, she plants explosives on the wall. She slides down the pipes to the garage using the harness. The woman shoots out the cameras, and slips into another air duct, before SWAT catches up with her. She gets on the subway and sneaks away. Catalea goes to Emilio's house, but finds it raided. Pepe is dead on the floor. Her grandmother is found dead in the kitchen. She searches for Emilio, and discovers him bound to a chair. He had clearly been tortured. Catalea apologizes and screams, in a mixture of sadness and rage. When Ross returns home, Catalea is waiting for him with a gun. She motions for him to take a seat. She reveals that she has rigged his chair with a pressure-sensitive explosive, to prevent him from doing anything stupid. The Catalea flower tag was a signal to Don Luis to pay attention. 
Catalea warns Ross, that unless he obtains information about Don Luis from the CIA, she will murder a family member once a week, until he is as hollow as she felt all those years ago. She promises to deactivate her bomb as soon as she leaves, which she does. Ross approaches Richard, and informs him of the situation. Richard refuses to divulge the information. Catalea calls Ross, and tells him that unless Richard gives her the address, he will die. Richard scoffs, pointing out that his windows are reinforced glass. Catalea fires a round through the glass with her sniper rifle, and scared, Richard provides him with the address. Catalea enters Pepe's garage and grabs some firearms. She notices the two dogs, and examines them. She grabs the armored vehicle, and drives to Don Luis' location. Marco is directing the men at Don Luis' mansion. The man notices something. They are about to be hit by a rocket. Luis barely gets out of the way as the rocket explodes in the room. Marco pulls him up, and they try to get him out. Four of the men get into a car to begin a convoy. Catalea rams her truck through the gate, crushing the car. She gets out and shoots the men to death. In the climactic shootout, she gradually eliminates Luis and Marco's men. Marco confines Luis in a safe room, while attempting to murder Catalea. It's just Marco and one other man after a few brief shootouts. Catalea murders the man, and then confronts Marco with her gun. They start fighting hand to hand, disarming each other. Catalea resorts to choking him with a towel. Marco eventually grabs a gun and prepares to fire, but Catalea ejects the clip, rips the slide off the gun, and stabs him in the neck. Luis leaves the room, and takes one of his vans, realizing that all his men are dead, but Catalea has no idea where he is. He comes to a halt due to a garbage truck, and receives a phone call from Marco's cell phone. Luis says she will never kill him. But then he looks back, the two dogs are in his escape vehicle. They rip him apart, completing Catalea's vengeance. Danny is apprehended by Ross, but he is clueless. Ross claims that even though he is not arrested, he still has questions to answer. Danny receives a phone call from Catalea. She tells him she's fine, and they have 40 seconds before the call is traced, which is enough time to ask three questions. He inquires about her real name, which she replies is Catalea. Danny wonders if his little bird will ever return. Catalea tells him that maybe one day she will be able to. When an agent informs Ross that Danny has received a call from Catalea, they rush back in. Danny says I love you, causing Catalea to cry. Ross orders him to hand over the phone, but Catalea hangs up before he can get any information from her. Ross looks at the phone, and tells Danny he can leave. Catalea puts on her sunglasses, and boards a bus bound for an unknown destination. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.